Hi everyone, it's Stephanie, your crafty librarian from the City of Stone and Heights Public Library. And today we are going to do string art. So if you were one of the lucky ones to get a craft kit, um, then you received a palette board in some shape or form. There are three different design palettes that um, I use for this because I wanted to get as many craft kits as we could out for as many palette boards that I could find. Um, as you know, supplies are kind of hard to come by still um, these days. You have a set of nails. Um, they're counted out for as four birds that we're gonna do today. And there are a few extra. So you should have no problem if you are to like smack the nail into the board and for some reason completely miss the top of the nail and you end up, I don't know, scrunching the nail down, you have an extra one. So don't worry about it. You're going to need a pair of scissors. Uh, optional but recommended is some type of tape. You will need your own hammer. Um, other things that came into the kit were some type of four colors of string. They're going to be different than the ones I have. And then you had a bobbin filled with white uh, string on there for another part of the birds. We are going to make four birds today. We're going to do the blue, yellow, green, and white bird. Now, if you don't like one of the birds, how they look, um, there should be enough for you to do some sort of four. You'll just want to count out the dots or make your own dots into these last two birds here. So if you're watching this and you're like, craft kit? What do you mean craft kit? I didn't get a craft kit. Um, make sure you stay on top of the Facebook page because you would have been notified that we're doing at home craft kits. So we have another one coming up and we are going to be doing canvas art for that one. And you'll get the supplies to be able to do it yourself. So to get started, uh, you need all the materials that I just discussed with you. For some reason, if you got a kit and you did not get the string, the nails, the palette board, or the design, uh, then definitely give the library a call, but you should have. I checked all the bags over myself. Um, or I also have my business card on the front of the bag that you received, and you can email me, and I will email you back uh, with a pretty quick response. So first thing you're going to need to do is cut your birds. Now, you would have received in the kit one small set of birds and another larger looking set of birds. You really could do either or. I'm gonna suggest you do the smaller set only because your string is gonna look better uh, for what I gave you and fill out the bird more than what the larger one would look like. So first thing first, you're going to cut out your design. If you, I like this way, but if you like it to look a little different and you want the other birds to you know, match up any other way. You can go ahead and do that. You're just going to obviously have to cut them. Um, but I like the way that they're paired. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to go ahead and change my camera angle so that you can see me better and see the board better. Okay, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. Uh, as you can see, I have placed the birds in two separate spots. You could definitely do one straight across, but I thought this gave the board just a little bit better of a fuller look than just having the four birds going straight across the board. So what you're gonna do is I like to tape down my design. You do not have to, um, but I, I like to to recommend it because then it holds the board there or the paper there a little bit better to the board. So with that being said, you'll definitely not want to tape down any of the little black spots that I've made for you. And those are indicators of where the nails should be placed. And I'm just going to tape this up the best that I can. And it's okay if you look at mine, you can see I've actually crossed over these little slots in the board. And if a nail is supposed to go there, you can kind of estimate or guess uh, a little bit better where they could be placed or do your best and not place them over the holes. But that's almost impossible to do with these boards just because each design is a little different. So if you want to do it that way, I would suggest cutting them 
each individually instead of placing it down as a group because you'd have a little bit more flexibility in doing so. But I'm going to just say if one goes on the goes where the hole is, I'm just going to work around that and kind of either A, skip the piece, which can be done. It's not going to really affect your board um, in piece. Or, like I said, just move it up just a little bit, and then you're going to kind of move every other one up just a little bit. All right, so I got it taped down, as you can see. I got my items in place, and this is where you're going to start hitting your nails in. So these are the nails. Um, as you can see, they're an 18 um, by 5 eighths, just in case you ever wanted to buy more and do this yourself. They are a wire nail. Uh, don't, if you can go with the ones that aren't uh, stainless steel, you get more in the box um, than you do if they're stainless steel. But it just depends on the look you're going for. And some people even actually use um, white nails. So they like the look of it, it's painted white. And then when they use it, it, um, I don't know, maybe they feel like it looks better with their design. But to me, I like it kind of this color. And they're cheap. They're $1.58 a box, uh, approximately. And you get a decent amount in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my nail up with one of the spots there on the board. And I'm going to use my hammer and hit it. So I'm going to go ahead and do all these. If you're watching along, go ahead and start. Or put me on pause or watch all the way through, whatever you want to do, and I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so I've gone ahead and done uh, the first two birds that were done at the bottom here, the yellow and the blue one, or for you, it's black and white, so the two to the left. I haven't done anything yet with my top board, but I wanted to focus on this with the nails. So the first thing is, you don't have to hit the nails all the way down into the board. You wanna give them a little bit of uh, space so that you're able to string a little bit easier through this, the board and through the nails. Uh, for me, I ended up having to go grab a pair of pliers, um, but if you don't have pliers at the dollar store, they do have wire cutters that I've used for the crafts inside the library when we've done string art. And they're really good. For some reason, I'm having a problem like with my hands the last couple of days. I think it's just been too much text messaging. So the other thing that you are going to probably want to get if you are going to go to the dollar store is super glue because at the end of the string where we tie a knot, you can super glue it. You don't have to. There's a lot of optional things that you can do, but I always like to make sure that the cord is going to be secure on there as best as possible. So with this, you can really start in any spot that you want. I'm going to go ahead, just so I remember where I started, is this bottom nail here. Now you're like, wait, there's a nail right here. Why? That is going to be our white string that's going to come around. And I wanted the nail to kind of line up with the other ones. Uh, but this is going to be a good way that I am going to remember that this is where I started. And if you are following along and watching this before you go into the next steps, I will say that you have enough strength for the larger ones. So I know I said, oh, I'm not sure, but looking at this and looking how much string and how small these actually are, these two birds can definitely be the larger one. Um, the bigger ones here, you know, they tend to have a little bit bigger of a belly in design, but I'm, I say that you're safe. Um, start with the small ones, see what it looks like, see how much string you have left. And then maybe you can go to the larger design or do both the larger design. I think you're going to have enough. So I tied a knot on this first one. I'm actually going to double tie the knot. Just a simple knot. Nothing fancy. Um, and then what I'm going to do is you can either do counterclockwise or clockwise. And you're going to go to the next screw here, nail, and wrap around. And go to the next one and wrap around come up to the next one and wrap around and you're just going to keep wrapping around. Now I gave myself a decent amount of nail left so that can cause a little bit of an issue if you don't keep your string nice and tight. If you keep your string nice and tight you'll have no issue of it coming off of the nail but sometimes if you're if you keep the nail loose 
uh, meaning I didn't hit it down that far, and then you are stringing loose, you do tend to sometimes have an issue where the string can pop up at the last one that you've been at. So again, I'm just following all of these nails in order. And what I'm doing is I am creating a outline for my bird. And just keep on going around. And again, I said counterclockwise or clockwise, you can even mix it up for the different birds, but don't mix it on the same bird. You definitely want to keep whatever motion you're going with in the same one. And then what's gonna happen is you have two choices at the end. You can either A, go ahead and wrap this around the ending point and you can cut the string and start over with the inside design or you just go from there. And so again, after looking at this and how much string I have left, you are definitely safe to go to the bigger design. So I would definitely do that. You're gonna get a little bit more for your board it's going to be easier to put the nails in and I think it's just going to look a little bit better, better size for the board. All right, so now I already have my nail at the starting point. Like I said, you can either cut it, well, tie it and cut it, but I just like to start doing my string art. So there's really no which way, but you're going to wrap around again and wrap and just keep going in any old design that you want. What I like to mention is you should be crossing from one side to the other. So for example, if I wrap myself around a nail to the, to the left, then I'm going to then find something across from it to the right. You don't really wanna follow the same um, side only because you want that design to look nice by that crisscross, giving it a little bit more fullness. So with this, you don't have to worry about, you know, then so much the string coming off. You should wrap it around there pretty good and it should hold pretty nicely. What's gonna happen when you're done and you have decided that you have enough string on your design and you've at least tried to attempt to hit all the loops. Some of this is a little bit harder because this is, again, the smaller design. You're then going to decide where you want to stop. It does not have to be your starting point. Um, it can be a different spot. You're just going to have to remember where you stopped. Um, so you, if you wanted to super glue it, you'd have that option. All right. Well, this is getting to be so cute. Um, if some of you have joined us before for the string art, We've had a lot of fun. Um, we've done uh, quite a few different designs. Our very first design was a pumpkin. So if you are got the kit and you're like, I absolutely hate what you're doing, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you can also find a design online. Usually I just Google string art patterns. Or if there's a particular, for example, I wanted to do these birds for a while, I'll say string art patterns, birds, and see what comes up and then go from there. Uh, if I uh, do a Google search and there's nothing there, then I usually will go to Pinterest or vice versa. I try to do a quite, a, quite a few different options. And then don't forget, uh, we have string art books in the library. So I know that they have a bird pattern similar to this, but there's lots of patterns. And you can really pick out any pattern and honestly, you don't even really need to know where they would place the nails. You could pick it yourself. Um, you just got to want to try to keep the pattern that there that you have there. All right. So I think I'm pretty happy with this. I have it pretty filled out for the size of the thing. I have lots of string left. So please go make the larger size. It's going to look better. Um, than what I have here. If you wanted to, you even could re-outline this again. That's not needed. Um, it might make it look a little bit neater, but in, it's not It's not needed. I haven't done that before. 
but because I have so much string left, I would consider it. And so now I'm going to pick an endpoint, and I'm actually going to string this around here one more time, and then I'm going to make it the opposite foot or wing that the bird had. Okay, so the way I like to do it is just kind of hold it. And I can just make a knot kind of like above it and then put it down through the nail and now I know that these are my two spots so here's my first bird chirp, chirp. that's cute um I think I would have liked it a lot better bigger but it is what it is anyway so some people have done it uh the crafts we even had signs that said love or home and then it had a nice big heart with the O and some people brought it home and actually did modifications to it. So I know one person uh, actually ended up putting hooks down at the bottom and she uses it for her keys. So if you like this and you display it somewhere and you're thinking, well, what am I gonna use it for? That's also an option too. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take the next string and I am going to go ahead and pick a spot. I'll probably do the same thing. Pick it down at the bottom here. It seems pretty much easy. I'll remember to glue it and it will be easier to cut. So like I said, you're gonna, you're probably gonna want the wire cutters. I mean, this pattern is small. The larger pattern, I don't know, you may not need it, um, but I, did, I do suggest it. So again, either counterclockwise or clockwise, Wrapping all the way around all of the nails. And getting that design looking good. So there were a couple of nails that I had to figure out what I was going to do because they were towards that little part in the wood there. And it came out nicely. Just remember that you're probably going to have one on each side that kind of aligns up to make the bird. So that is something to consider when you do it, that you have the other side too. So I say when you work, make sure you work either from like the left to the right, putting the nails in because it would make it easier so you're not having to cross over the other set of nails or right to left. So just make sure that when you do that, you're not trying to do like the outer parts of the bird and then trying to go into the inner because that is just not going to work. Um, if you mix them up from bird to bird. All right, so I'm almost done here with the pink one. And again, just that counterclockwise, just have you watch this a couple more times. And following each nail. And like I said, come back to the bottom and you're just gonna crisscross, crisscross, crisscross any way shape or form that you feel like you want to from left to right right to left top to bottom bottom up um, bottom right bottom left you know there's there's no real way for this one that you have to do a certain style there are sometimes i've seen more advanced string arts that are like that uh, but this is not one of them so if you're watching this and you're like okay i couldn't get a kit this looks really interesting where did you get your stuff? Um, I purchased most of the boards at Michael's. Um, the color that I have here, these, this one is always my favorite because it works great for even stenciling and painting that we've done at the library. And you can get these at Michael's. I bought some at Joann's, or sorry, some at Hobby Lobby and some um, string the string here I bought in bulk uh, at Michael's, but you wouldn't have to buy it in bulk. So when you're interested in you know making your own, you can just go buy a single color and wherever you buy it, you know that's completely up to up to you. Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, they all carry the embroidery frost, floss. So I'm just gonna go through and again start to fill in my design. Then for the wires, or I'm sorry, the wire nails, I bought those from Home Depot, but 
any hardware store should have what you're looking for. And some of you got larger, or sorry, I should say longer nails because the board was thicker. Um, so, but usually, I, like I said earlier, that 18 by 5 8 is what I go for. But just kind of take a look at the length of the nail, kind of know what your board is that you're working with, and you want to make a, a good selection from there. One thing I like to do is I really try to make sure that I get every single nail. No special way do I do it. Uh, I like to kind of just make it look more like I naturally chose the the next nail I'm going to versus <clears throat> versus you know selecting a crisscross pattern. Um, I mean, sometimes it just happens. Like you can see, I did two different complete patterns for the birds so far. I mean, I'm still going to add to the pink one. I'm not done. I like to make it look a little bit fuller. And the good thing about leaving the nails up a little bit higher is it makes it a lot easier to do that because I can push the rest of the string down a little bit and make sure I can fit my nails under there, my string under the nails. So that's what's nice to leave that up. And then what I'll do at the end is I can just start hammering them all down at once and be able to secure that string down there a little bit better. Also, the reason why you might want a pair of pliers or wire, like I said, the wire cutters I used is because if you hit a nail in there kind of wonky, you're going to want something to help lift it up too. So it's not only for needing it because... Well, my hands hurt, and it was hard to hold the nail with a small design. It's also for some other options that are available if you tend to go crazy with the hammer or don't know how to use a hammer, and you end up hitting one in the way it shouldn't be hit. Okay, so I think I'm somewhat happy with this. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, so what I'm going to do from here is, again, finish my nail with the last one, my string with the last nail, cut it, make myself a knot, I always tend to just do it up in the air a little bit, it just, I don't know, for some reason it's easier than stringing it right around the nail itself okay and like I said you can you did the outline you did the fill in you can even go again and fill a outline to it if you want I mean see if you don't like this what harm is it to fill an outline so from here I would Make sure that everything's like double knotted. I would cut these down. Um, I would put my super glue on them. You don't want to cut down too far. You could technically tuck these in a little bit. I definitely don't want to cut mine until I get my super glue on them. And I don't have it right here with me at the moment. So this is what they're going to look like for now. And then I can always tuck them in as well once, you know, you can't see you know now that so but I'm gonna leave them out and then these two little ones at the end are for the string that you had on the bobbin most of you have white but if you had a lighter color board I thought it would look better um, to have more like a, a look of a branch than uh, white on such a pale board so again you're just gonna take it and you can have this string as, as long as you want as long as you have some some of you have a decent amount of string uh, just depended on how I ended up wrapping it around the bobbin and what was left or if I already had one pre-done and if you like bobbins you want to wrap the fabric itself around the bobbin before you get started you could do that too uh, they are at Hobby Lobby I've seen them for super cheap um, I think I got like a hundred for less than two bucks so again secure you can double knot and then you're just going to bring the string over. But what I'm going to do is to make it look a little bit fuller 
is to kind of go back and forth with it a, a couple of times because you're going to make it look like they're sitting on a, I don't know, doesn't really, I don't want to say a wire because wires aren't white, but on some type of string, maybe one of those like laundry strings back in the day that people used to dry their clothes on. Although I guess people still could do that now. So here I have my little string that they're sitting on. I'm happy with that. Uh, again, I will cut that. I will make my knot. Once I make my knot, I am going to secure that around the nail. Make sure that looks all good there and pull nice and tight and then I can make another knot and then I will super glue it. And so that is what these two look like so far. So these are my little birdies. Hopefully you like what yours looks like and I'm gonna start working on these. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back. I did the next bird here. And what I did is I actually did all the stringing back and forth first, because I wanted to be able to show you what it looked like if you did an outline. So you can see, I don't know, I think I kind of like the outline a little bit better than no outline but it's really up to you what you end up doing. You could probably outline it a couple of times because there's enough string left to even do that. I think even for the bigger one, you could outline it and then string it and still have enough. Um, possibly outline it twice. So if you wanted to outline it once the first time, then string and then outline it again, you could do that or string and then save enough for the outline. It's kind of up to you. You just kind of kind of have to play with it. Uh, I still have this last one to do and I'm actually going to do it here in a little bit, but I wanted to show you, you know, what this looked like as an outline, and then you can see my finished product soon. You will see it uh, in one of the pictures. So I thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the kit. Um, this does take, oh, I would say it probably took me a little over an hour, hour and 20 minutes to do this video for you, hitting all the nails, stringing all the string, and I still have one left. So keep that in mind when you go to do this. And then for this one, I'm also going to put another set of string there at the bottom. So the last thing I'm gonna do with my birds, uh, cut all the strings that I have left over, a little bit of super glue on there, and cut the strings here, a little bit of super glue at the end on those as well. And you'll see my finished product in the photos. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it. Everyone have a great day.